Hello and welcome everyone to Engineering Value, a podcast from Draper. I'm your host, Tyler Kern. Thanks so much for joining us for this episode of the program. Today, we're talking gymnasium equipment and uh, talking about how far things have come in terms of this area, some of the various uses for gymnasiums and how technology has evolved when it comes to utilizing these spaces. And so today I'm talking to Neil Turner, the Director of Gymnasium Equipment Sales at Draper. Neil, welcome to the program. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So, Neil, let's start off just by talking about the evolution in gymnasium equipment and the ability to customize environments, right? Because I remember the days of holding a key switch to control, you know, the equipment in a gymnasium, you know, to move a, a basketball hoop up or something like that. How far have things come in terms of how we can control things in a gymnasium environment since the days of, of using the key switch? Still a good number of jobs that go out with key switches. <laughs> but when you get into the, the collegiate facilities, the clubs, the pay-to-play type facilities, commercial facilities, a lot more of those are going to control systems, which could be uh, a simple keypad to operate it. It could be a touchscreen. Mm-hmm. could be even an iPad or a, another type of tablet to operate your equipment. So it's got, come a long ways from that old key switch. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's kind of important to talk about because uh, I'm curious from your perspective, have you seen that gymnasiums are being used for a wider range of uses these days? And and if so, how is that having an impact on how people view the need to maximize the use of controls in their facilities? Well, there there are a lot more people wanting to use the gym at these point in time. In the schools, Mm -hmm. there are a lot more teams that are trying to get that space. You know, it could be the competition, the varsity teams, could be clubs, intramurals, um, you know, even even the band or the cheerleading or possibly even, uh, you know, drill team could be working for space in schools. And you go to commercial type facilities and there's all kinds of AAU teams and travel teams and club teams. But beyond that, they, they may use that same space for, you know, lacrosse, wrestling, um, you know, cheer, uh, expos, farmers markets, uh, crafts fairs, all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, to accommodate these, it's become more important to be able to switch the facility back and forth, you know, from basketball to volleyball to open space, you know, so, so that's where the controls come in and are become more popular and more important in these types of facilities. And I'm guessing having these kind of types of systems in place can help save time when it comes to setup, right? That if you know that you have got to go from basketball one day to, you know, a, uh, a farmer's market or, you know, uh, something, mm-hmm. some other kind of event. Um, that it helps to be able to have these kinds of controls in place that allow you to make that transition happen rather quickly. Yeah, time folding equipment is is lost opportunity for either practice or or the farmer's market or, or you know, the, the craft fair. Um, typical bas- basketball backstop or divider curtain overhead volleyball system takes about three minutes to fold. So where the, gr- the control systems come in and give you a lot of advantage is that with the key switch, you can only run one item at a time, maybe two, or you have to throw a lot of people at standing in front of the key switch to operate it, which costs money. Um, Mm -hmm. So if you've got a control system, you can operate things in groups. You can run two items simultaneously, even four items simultaneously, up to eight items at a time, depending on how much the, how many circuits you have, and how, uh, how much equipment a person can operate or visually watch as they operate it. Um, <clears throat> you know, two items running at, at a time cuts your setup time in half. Four items cuts it down to 25%. So the more items you run at a time, the, the quicker you can turn the facility over. Absolutely, which, which helps a lot just given the, the various uses for these gymnasiums these, these days, the way that uh, you were describing earlier. Absolutely. So when it comes to the process of, of creating or upgrading these systems, depending on, uh, on what the case may be, how vital is the pre-planning process? Let's say someone is interested in this. How vital is that process of pre-planning um, to, to get ahead and to understand exactly what their needs are and what you know, they're looking to accomplish? Pre-planning is probably the most important part. Um, it should involve, the, obviously, the equipment controller, uh, the, the control supplier, uh, the owner of the facility, the architect, the electrician or electrical engineer. And that planning needs to happen before they get the electrical plans done, the, the, the wiring diagrams, the schematics. And, and the key to sitting down or to doing it then is to sit down and, and discuss, um, you know, face-to-face or virtually or, or even by email exchange, how the owner wants to use the facility, you know, what types of items they want to run at the same time, um, how, how, how important is switching time and, and how, you know, how many circuits do they want to use and that type of stuff. Uh, so it's really a matter of getting from the owner 
what they want to do with their facility, and then working it backwards from there to see if you can accommodate what they want it to do. From that pre-planning process um, that, that you were describing, are there cost savings that could be found in that process that, that could pay off in the long run? Well, obviously, there's the, the, the savings on the operational side. Not having to have, you know, four people standing at, at, at two key switches each run eight items at a time. Um, there's savings there. There's time that you save from, uh, you know, time is money. You know, you, you save the, the time in between people uh, not being able to practice. But beyond that, there's also savings opportunities for equipment and specifically the, the electrical equipment from the electrician or the traditional um, uh, uh you know, the, the breaker boxes, that type of stuff. And the savings there comes into being able to share circuits, more, hook more than one item to an individual circuit. Typically with key switch control, every item is on its own 20 amp circuit with a circuit breaker back at the breaker box. Um, with group control systems, you can, you can, well, I'm back up a little bit. It has to be in that way because um, you can't control what any devices can be run at the same time. So if you've got two items that are on the same circuit, all of a sudden you kick a circuit breaker if they're turned on at the same time. But with control systems, you're able to program those and to have items that will never ever run together share the exact same circuit. Um, and, and where that comes into is if you if you do a good job planning, all of a sudden you don't have to have that extra breaker box on the wall that comes in at about five grand. Uh, or you could, you know, could be a matter of you save you know, half a dozen circuits in the building. Um, so that's where the, the equipment side of it comes in is, is being able to plan well and share the circuits. Absolutely, absolutely. So what are some of maybe the key capabilities uh, that, that you found that, that people are particularly interested in when it comes to Draper solutions in gymnasium type environments? You know, the, um, obviously the, the, being able to run the groups, being able to save money. Mm -hmm. And I've got some examples of some kind of ex extreme sides of it in, in opposite directions. Yeah. Um, we did a, a really nice project called the Roblin Events Center at the uh, Placer County Fairgrounds in Roseville, California recently. That it, it was a big facility, had um, 24 basketball courts in it. Uh, wow. On each basketball court, I'm sorry, it was 12 basketball backstops, 24 volleyball courts. Um, you had electric height adjusters, you had 17 divider curtains, you had scoreboard lifts. It was a total of 113 motors in there. And we sat down with the owner early on, did some planning with them. And on those 113 motors, we were able to get them down to 36 circuits and still operate the facility exactly like they wanted to. Uh, this layout was set up with three bays, or I'm sorry, four bays with three courts in each one. And, and those you went through the control system, you could operate an entire bay at the same time. You, with one button, you could switch uh, all three courts in there from being ready to play basketball to being able to run volleyball. Uh, it ran the volleyball systems down and the backstops up with one button at the exact same time. So we talk about savings on setup, it was extreme. Uh, but then that facility, by running 113 motors off of 36 circuits, we saved them 77 spots in a breaker box. That was a total of th at least three uh, breaker boxes that they didn't have to have in the facility right there was a savings of almost 15 grand, uh, on that one facility. Um, so that, so that's kind of the, the extreme side of the, the pre-planning there, but there's also some, a lot of other options and flexibilities that control systems offer that, that you may not see. We did a project in Reading, Pennsylvania at Alvernia university. Wasn't as big as the, the, the Placer County job, but it was, um, eight backstops, 11 divider curtains, two practice cages. And these were all inside of a running track. And they would have big events in the here, specifically indoor track events. Um, Pennsylvania doesn't get warm very early, so they got indoor track. Um, so the fire marshal was extremely concerned about uh, egress, being able to get people out if there were a fire or an emergency. So mm -hmm. he required that all those divider curtains be tied into the control system. Um, so that if the fire alarm went off, all those equipment, all that equipment, all the divider curtains and practice cages started lifting so that people could get out. Um, and it was done with just a, a simple dry contact. Now, obviously, that in that case, it limited how many items you could share circuits on because all those curtains had to be on their own circuit along with the practice cages. Otherwise, you overload circuits and kick circuit breakers. But we were able to provide a solution that really provided 
uh, at next to no extra cost, a, a way to meet fire marshal's you know demands for the project. So it worked out really well. Those are two really, really fantastic examples, Neil. Uh, thank you so much for, for sharing those with us. So, so as, as we begin to wrap up our conversation today, just looking at gymnasium equipment and, uh, and the various capabilities that exist in this world, do you have any final thoughts, any conclusions you want to uh, leave our audience with or anything we haven't touched on yet that you'd like to, uh, to share with the audience today? Let me turn it back over to you, Neil, just for, for any closing thoughts you have here on our, on our topic today. You hit on it earlier. The pre-planning is the key. Um, mm -hmm. Making sure that everybody is on the same page don't just put out an electrical plan and say, now make the control system work. If you do that, the control system may work, but you don't take full advantage of it. You don't experience the savings that you could, could otherwise, you know, by sharing circuits and that type of stuff. Make sure you get everybody involved early, um, you know, not, not just at the last minute. Um, and, and the other thing that I would say is that, you know, people kind of need to, um, the owner especially, think outside the box. Um, Come up with with ideas um, that that is the the pie in the sky side of it, and 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 put it to the control supplier to come as close as they can to that. They may not be able to provide everything that you ask for, but you might be surprised on what they can provide. Um, don't don't be afraid to to offer unusual ideas. Um, the, the the example of the fire alarm was something that. When it first came up, our reaction was, I don't know, know of any way to do it. You'll have to talk to the electrical engineer. Well, it was very simple once we got into it and started looking at it. Um, so there's more opportunities like that out there than what people realize. And, and, and let the, the equipment control or the control providers get involved, offer ideas. You give them ideas and, and, and put your heads together and see what you can come up with. Neil Turner, Director of Gymnasium Equipment Sales for Draper Inc. Neil, how can people get in touch with you if they have questions, if they've listened to the podcast and they think, I'd like to reach out and get more information from Neil and the team there at Draper. What's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Well, Draper, uh, you can find them on the website at draperinc.com. <clears throat> My direct contact is, is interner at draperinc.com for email. Um, or reach out to us uh, through the contact page. Uh, we also have a network of installing dealers around the country who are a great resource for us for gymnasium equipment as well. Um, lot, lots of resources, a lot of experience here with uh, people being able to, to plan jobs for you and, and help you out with, with any side of the gymnasium equipment business, not just controls. Fantastic stuff. Neil Turner, Director of Gymnasium Equipment Sales at Draper Inc. Neil, thank you again so much for joining us here on Engineering Value. Thank you for having me. And everyone, thank you for tuning into this episode of Engineering Value, a podcast from the folks at Draper. Again, make sure to reach out if you have questions. If you want to talk to Neil a little bit more about your particular needs, what pre-planning could look like for you when it comes to your gymnasium facility, get in touch with him, get in touch with him uh, with the folks at Draper as well. And stay tuned for future episodes of the podcast. Everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure to go subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Spotify to stay up to date with the latest from Draper. And we'll be back soon with more episodes of the show. But for my guest today, Neil Turner, I've been your host, Tyler Kern. Thank you so much for joining us.